Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. So you heard about the latest and greatest feature of Microsoft Fabric, which is called Direct Lake, but you are not sure how you can use it and in which scenarios to choose this way. In this video I'll walk you through what is Direct Lake in Microsoft Fabric and I will show you how to create a semantic model that leverages Direct Lake storage mode. Stay tuned! Let's kick it off by examining current options when designing and implementing Power BI semantic models. And I'll start with the pre-Microsoft Fabric era, when we had two main options for handling Power BI semantic models. The most common way of dealing with Power BI implementation and the official recommended way of doing things is import mode. And this is a typical workflow when using import mode. You have a data source, let's imagine it's a SQL database. And there are some tables in that database. Then you import this data into the instance of the analysis services tabular. And from there, Power BI reports are sending DAX queries to populate visuals in your reports. Whenever you need fresh data in your semantic model, you need to go back to the data source and refresh the data stored in the analysis services instance. This approach has its greatest benefit in providing a blazing fast performance, as data is stored in RAM memory. On the flip side, the most obvious downsides are data duplication, because you are basically creating a copy of the data from the data source in analysis services instance for Power BI, as well as data latency, because in order to have the latest data from the source available, you need to refresh the semantic model on a regular basis. Direct query mode solves these shortcomings, namely data duplication and data latency, since no data is moved from the original data source and your users will always have the latest data available, because the data is retrieved at the query time. However, and I'm sure that all of you who use direct query mode at least once, will agree that the performance is, well, significantly worse than with import mode, let's put it that way. And here is where direct lake mode enters the stage, as now a third storage mode option, trying to exploit benefits and overcome the downsides of both import and direct query modes. In a nutshell, it's a hybrid of import and direct query. There is no data duplication and data latency, since Power BI will read the data stored in the one lake delta files directly. But this time with the performance of the import mode, or let's say very close to the import mode, because the data is stored in the same way as in the proprietary form of, of analysis services which is suitable for fast data retrieval. Before I show you how to create a Direct Lake model in Microsoft Fabric, one important thing to keep in mind, Direct Lake is not a magic wand, nor a solution for each and every scenario when working with Power BI and Fabric. Import and Direct Query models are still more than relevant, and you should carefully evaluate when and why it would make sense to choose Direct Lake over import mode. Let's now dive deeper into the Direct Lake mode in Microsoft Fabric, and we'll start by examining prerequisites for Direct Lake mode to work. First and most important, you can use Direct Lake only with Fabric capacities, which are marked as F capacities, and Power BI Premium capacities, which we know as P capacities. This means that if you are currently operating on the Power BI Shared Capacity or Premium Per User License, you won't be able to use Direct Lake storage mode. Next, you'll need either a lake house or a warehouse in your fabric capacity, and your data must be stored in the Delta format. Direct Lake works only and only with Delta tables, so if your data resides in Parquet, CSV or something else, no Direct Lake possible. Finally, there is a concept called V-ordering, which I intentionally mark with an asterisk. This means this is not a hard requirement for Direct Lake, meaning you can still use Direct Lake mode, even if your delta tables are not V-ordered, but you should then expect a performance degradation. If you are wondering what is V-ordering, without going deep into technical details, it's enough to know that this is Microsoft's proprietary algorithm used to additionally optimize delta tables during the process of writing data. By default, all fabric engines will use V-ordering when writing data into a lake house or warehouse. Another important concept to understand 
is data refreshing direct lake, which is also known as framing. This is the process of keeping the semantic model in sync with the latest version of the delta table. Here you may see all the files currently framed in the context of the semantic model. Once the new files en file enters the one lake, here is what should happen in order to have the latest file version included in the semantic model. The semantic model must be reframed to include the latest data. This process has multiple implications that you should be aware of. First and most important, whenever framing occurs, all the data currently stored in the memory, and we are talking about cache memory, is dumped out from the cache. Next, there is no real data refresh happening with framing. Unlike with import mode, where kicking off the refresh process will literally put the snapshot of the physical data in the semantic model, framing refresh is metadata only. So data stays in the delta table in one lake and no data is loaded in the direct lake semantic model. We are only telling our semantic model, hey, there is a new file down there in one lake, go and take it from here once you need the data for the report. This is one of the key differences between the direct lake and the import mode. Since the direct lake refresh is just a metadata refresh, it's usually a low intensive operation that shouldn't consume too much time and resources. Even if you have a billion row table, don't forget, you are not refreshing billion rows in your semantic model. You refresh only the information about that giant table. Here is a brief overview of the key concepts relevant to direct lake semantic models. Syncing means automatically adding new tables from one lake to a semantic model. Framing, as already mentioned, assumes adding the info about the latest version of the data to a semantic model. When we talk about paging, we are referring to loading columns needed by the query into a cache memory. Finally, the concept of temperature is relevant for querying data and it ensures that frequently used columns are being kept in the cache memory. Here is the list of current limitations when working with direct lake semantic models. First, you can create a direct lake model only from one single lake house or warehouse. Next, keep in mind that these SQL views are not supporting and that using them in the semantic model will cause a fallback to direct query mode. Other noticeable limitations include the inability to use features such as DAX, calculated columns and tables, composite models and creating relationships on columns of date-time data type. However, bear in mind that Direct Lake, the same as the entire Fabric platform, is changing rapidly, so make sure to always check the list of current limitations in the official Microsoft documentation. In this demo, I'll show you how to create a custom Direct Lake semantic model from the web UI in Power BI service. As you may notice, I've already created a lake house in my Fabric workspace. It's called DP600LH. Whenever you create a lake house in the workspace, by default, two additional items will be created. SQL Analytics endpoint for querying the lake house and the default Power BI semantic model. Although you may use the default semantic model to create Power BI reports on top of it, a recommended practice is to create a custom semantic model because the default model has certain limitations. I'll open my lake house and then in the top right corner switch to the SQL Analytics endpoint view. Once I expand the ribbon on the top and choose the reporting tab, there is an option to manage default semantic model, which I'm going to select now and add all the tables from the lake house to the default model. However, I want to show you how to create a custom semantic model that may contain all or some of the tables from the lake house. I'll call this one DP600 Custom Semantic Model and I'll choose DIM Customer, DIM Date, DIM Product and Fact Internet Sales Tables from the AdventureWorks database. After a few seconds, if I go back to my workspace, you may see our newly created semantic model available. Let's click on three dots and then open data model. I'm now in the model view and I can now manage my semantic model from the web UI. Let's first create relationships between the tables. First, between the dim customer and fact internet sales tables. 
Be mindful about the cardinality and cross-filter direction options, but more on that in the next video. Once relationships are established, I can go and create a new DAX measure. You may recall that one of the current limitations in Direct Lake mode is the inability to create calculated columns and tables. Therefore, these options are grayed out in the home ribbon. Let's create a simple measure for calculating the sum of the sales amount from fact internet sales table. Then, without leaving my semantic model experience in the web user interface, I can create a new Power BI report on top of it. So, I'll click on new report and let's build something really basic. I'll drag a table visual on the report canvas and put a color column from the dim product table. Let's add our sales amount measure as well. And another visual where I'll display the total sales amount per gender of my customers. Once done, I'll save my report. Click on save in the top right corner and let's call this report DP600 Custom Report Direct Lake. Let's go back to our workspace. And here is the report we've just created, ready for our users to consume the data from it. That's all folks, if you enjoyed this video make sure to click this like button down below. Also if you want to stay up to date with latest Microsoft Fabric and Power BI features, make sure to subscribe to Data Mozart YouTube channel. See you soon!